Ja, äh, Stefan Schumacher ist mein Name. Um, I'm leading portfolio and uh, business development for automotive and systems. And before we come to the actual pro project proposal, I'd like to give a few words, a little bit of reflection on our journey on um, open source and Eclipse STV. Um, it started, um, I think it was in September last year, where we had the contribution day at our headquarter in uh, Bonn, very successful as I thought. We had uh, 70 participants on site. We had, uh, I think, 250 or what online. Uh, we had a wonderful day. It was only one day, so not two days. And I think it was the last contribution day. It changed now to the collaboration day. So we had a very successful uh, start from our perspective. Uh, we volunteer to um, host this event because we want to really want to make it um, open that we are really betting on open source and really want to contribute. We started with our first uh, contribution, just a little bit of remembrance. Uh, it was the ambient light services, probably a little bit different of, of the projects what we talked today, which were, I hear a lot of chips and the hardware related topics, a lot of um, API middleware topic. This was a a service which is somehow sitting on top of it. Last time I said this is a service where you can um, feel and uh, uh, really feel and touch the software defined vehicle. So it's a it's a ambient light service, interactive lightning concept for the um, outside lighting of the car. It, it sits on top of the architecture. Um, but uh, with our experience and long track record in automotive, we have a lot of experience coming from projects. Yeah? And out of the projects, we have assets, we have tools, we have methodologies, and we were thinking about what is, could be the next step, uh, what we contributed. Last time we presented this uh, concept of the Hypercube, which is a component-based framework uh, from the onboard, offboard integration of the projects we are running. And we are running this on, on large scale in operation. And now we have decided to take one of these cubes here of the Hypercube as the next contribution. And we selected the one which we think is good in addition to the existing projects and uh, which is also somehow one of our core components. And we're really looking forward to discuss with hopefully every single one of you how we can integrate our contributions with, with the existing other projects or even with commercial projects or with other components or other partners. This is really the aim why we are contributing to open source and the Eclipse Foundation. Um, the next piece is uh, we are contributing is the developer console. As I said, it sits uh, right in the middle uh, or in the central part of our Hypercube. And um, Sebastian, uh, which is with me, he was a real expert. I'm not. I'm not Alexander. I'm not the expert. <laughs> so Sebastian will talk, uh, uh, talk you through the uh, contribution. Yeah. Thank okay. You. Thank you, Stefan. Okay, I can... No, the other. <laughs> Thank you. So hello. Yeah, my name is Sebastian Lang. I'm senior technical architect at T Systems, and I have the pleasure to introduce Eclipse Development Console to you today. Um, but I want to start a bit somewhere else. So a couple of days ago, Ola Kalenius, CEO of Mercedes, stated the following. The product doesn't get old. It actually gets better, just like fine wine. And uh, what he meant with that is that with the increasing demand of software updates for vehicles, just like with mobile phones, the vehicle will stay attractive over longer periods of time because you get new features um, for longer periods of time. But as we know, um, to get there, like Apple or Android, they're really good with over the air updates. And we are working with many OEMs. We know the OEMs are not there yet. So there's still, still quite a way to go. Tesla is maybe there, they are as good as Apple, but all the other OEMs hmm, it will take some time. But still, um, if you're there, if you're developing um, 
for example, a mobile app or software for a vehicle, you're facing this problem in the end. You have to test it on many, many devices. And you have two options here. If you, uh, one question, who has ever done mobile app development? Okay, a couple of people. Okay, so you know this problem. So you're developing your one application and you have to test it and run it on many, many devices. And the one option is, okay, you purchase all these devices and you deploy it on all these devices. Yeah, that's very, very expensive, very, very time consuming. It's a lot of pain. Or you use something like browser stack here on the right hand side, which is able to simulate your actual hardware, which uh, saves you a lot of time. But in both approaches, what you still need is an orchestrator, something that helps you to make sure that a new version of your software actually is tested on the right devices and with the right feature set. And that actually what is Eclipse Develop Console. It's the orchestrator that helps you to organize the testing of your software versions on the different devices. So the reason why we are all here is um, it's the time of the software defined vehicle. So every OEM is faced with the challenge that their time of new releases is getting uh, faster and faster and they all need to be tested and to make sure that the new software version actually does the right thing and doesn't break anything. And at the same time, the cost for physical vehicles and physical devices is increasing. So our vision here is to provide an end-to-end -end streamlined process to help software developers and testers to make sure a new software release actually works as it should. So we have four columns here, and this is the first column actually what developer console is, what is, is it about? So we have a software repository, some packaging and signing, and then the, the testing part where the actual testing takes place. This is not part of developer console. Later on, there comes the release management where you actually do campaign management, where you decide on which vehicles and how many vehicles you want to deploy a certain software version. And you usually start with a dedicated car to do a dedicated test. So the focus of the Eclipse Developer Console is the first part to streamline that process. And the goal is to break the silos, yeah, to get the de software development and the actual business together. So how do we do that? Um, first one is make it easier for tester and developers to to um, orchestrate, to administrate the release process of a new software version. So all they have to do is to upload the latest version of their software, start this process, it runs through, and if it goes through, um, it's ready to be released on the real vehicle. Um, so it's really comparable to CI CD. And the second part, um, we also provide the capability to integrate scenarios for simulations. I will explain a bit more what that actually means in a minute. So this is a high level architecture of Eclipse Developer Console. It comes with a nice shiny UI and a dashboard. And below that, there are the two main components. There's something called track management and scenario management. Below we have the vehicle repository. This is actually not part of Eclipse Developer Console, but we provide an API. So you can integrate your own vehicle repository that you're already using. Uh, track management, what is a track? A track is just a group of vehicles or devices that you want to use uh, for a certain testing scenario. So you combine their physical devices, virtual devices in a group which um, actually provide the necessary functionality that you want to test. So you're kind of creating a small fleet for your testing purpose. What's the scenario management part? Scenario is in the end just predefined steps that you want to be re-executed again and again against a certain track. So track again, just a group of devices or vehicles scenario predefined steps that you want to re-execute again and again. A couple of examples here. 
device replacement. Usual scenario that needs to be simulated. You have a vehicle with a certain device and on this device certain features are activated. For example, voice commands. So now this uh, device is broken, needs to be replaced and you need to make sure that after the device replacement, the same services are activated again on the new device. That's one possible scenario. Another scenario, a real car driving around in the real world for minutes or even hours, and you record each and every MQTT message, for example, that is being sent out by this vehicle. Then you have a collection of these MQTT messages, and you can just replay this scenario again and again against the track. So you can simulate real world behavior of a car again and again and also at large scale. Another example, um, remote commands. So you can have a scenario that says lock the door, unlock the door, lock the door, unlock the door and so on and so on and so on. Turn on the lights, turn off the lights. Uh, to simulate remote commands, uh, over and over again against certain devices. And last uh, example, in case the OEM is using lightweight M2M communication for the device configuration, um, it could be predefined steps telling the device do a bootstrap, do a register, do an update, do change certain object IDs and so on and so on. So all of these very individual could be scenarios that could be selected and then simulated. So the last part here uh, in a in a vehicle simulator. These are two screenshots of the actual user interface of Eclipse Developer Console. On the upper picture, we see the, the simulation part where we see a couple of simulations that have been triggered, currently running or already terminated. And on the lower part, we see a certain track. So this track now has seven vehicles in there. It consists of different brands. The vehicles are located in different regions, which could, which could be important for the simulation part. Um, the current software versions of the devices and so on, so on. So what are the main features of Eclipse Developer Console? Uh, it provides the capability to manage these tracks, so just groups of virtual or physical devices and vehicles for simulation purposes. It provides the capability to manage scenarios, so these think of it as zip files containing these dedicated steps that you want to simulate again and again. Uh, it provides the ability to integrate into your simulation solution. Uh, you can also integrate your virtual vehicles if you already have them. And it comes with this nice and shiny UI, which is easily extendable. So we think uh, Eclipse Developer Console is a, <laughs> no, uh, is, is a, is a necessary step um, to make Ole Kalenius statement reality so that each new software re release has to go through this process to become actually releasable and to turn vehicles into fine wine. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Yeah. Um, thank you for the presentation. So question is, um, you, you described the uh, usage of virtual vehicles. Can you talk, does the framework support also actual vehicles or hardware test benches? And can you manage the diversity of test environments? Yes, yes, it's all integratable via APIs. So it doesn't matter in the end if it's a it's a test test bench where you integrate uh, devices, so only the device itself, not the full vehicle, but just the device or you can also integrate the full uh, vehicle if you have that at hand. It doesn't matter, at least if it's uh, accessible via APIs. Oh. Uh, but, um, especially track is thought of, it can be a hybrid track, so it can, can consist physical devices and virtual devices at the same time. Uh, hi, also thank you from my side for having that presentation. Um, are there 
already any APIs available for me to trigger like tests that have been pre-configured while using the UI, obviously, or is it that people have to go in that UI and basically start the test, for example? Uh, good question. I have to think about it. Uh, or, or let me ask a question, Ben. So the, the question is, is are there any pre-configured tests available? No, the, the question is whether, I mean, let's say I'm I'm somebody designing that test, right? Yeah. Designing the tracks and, and or defining the tracks and the scenarios. And uh, then I, I mean, we've been talking a lot in the community that for the whole testing purpose, it's very important to be as as automated, automated as possible. Yeah. So I'm wondering whether there's any API available that I can say, okay, now please trigger this and that test, for example. And mm. Yeah. Integrate into CI/CD pipeline. Yes, exactly. Yes, yes. Clear. Yes. Okay. Yes. And then, like the the second remark, more or less, that I would have, uh, especially looking to Joe and Kai. I mean, we've been we, we're having these uh, testing and validation breakout group uh, for a couple of weeks ongoing now. So I would highly recommend if if you and your colleagues could join that, <laughs> because it, it seems to be like this project and the whole things that you guys are doing should be part of that discussion. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Yeah. It'd be great. Yeah. Actually, within uh, one more one more answer before we continue within Hypercube, we integrated. So we have a, a workflow solution which we integrate. So developer console triggers a workflow solution which actually then executes these, these steps. But this is just one another API call, so it can be re replaced with any other solution you would like to use to execute these test steps. For example, yeah. Node-RED if you want to. Sorry. Yeah. I didn't completely understand what exactly now is part of this solution and how to imagine this cr concretely. So if I'm, for example, comparing that to some testing stack, more like whatever X-Ray and, and, and C, uh, normal CI, CD pipelining stuff. So where exactly is there the, the uh, differentiation between that? And especially if we go to the testing itself, most part is the very OEM specific. So um, Docker station stuff I get, but the other stuff I, is so specific. I, how do you want to tackle that and how is this integrated into the system? Yeah, good question. So so what is actually part uh, of Eclipse Developer Console? The, the magenta colors, the gray colors are not. So you can see vehicle simulator, the actual vehicle simulation part is not part of it. So usually the OEM already has such a solution, which then would need to be integrated or with an Eclipse uh, SDV to find the proper, uh, the appropriate uh, project to be integrated um, or implement something new. But this is not part of Eclipse Developer Console. So this is where the integration work begins. So it's so to simplify it is basically a management just of test execution. If you want to name it like, like this, yeah. If I yeah, name yeah. it something else, you yeah. no 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 you no, <laughs> no you you are you're absolutely right. No, it's 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 correct. So the the problem starts with the scenarios because they are absolutely proprietary, because there's no kind of standard for remote control commands or. Um, device man well like with m2m at least a bit of a standard but still oems treat them differently so this is where it becomes very individual and then you have to 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 check how can we integrate that in the in the already existing landscape of the customer okay. and if <laughs> maybe i've been taking a lot of time but i'm sorry uh, do you have um, also because of testing is always also a point of um, traceability um, did you consider baselining test cases, traceability, and how to integrate this with other systems, uh, especially for going um, to ASPICE? Oh, ASPICE. <laughs> um, to be honest, ASPICE, no. Um, uh, we decided not uh, to, uh, to do that, but it's under understandable that if you if you want to have that, then you are free to to extend it in in that direction. Um, the other one was baselining test cases. Yeah. Baseline testing. Versioning of test cases. Mm, yeah. Um, yeah, it's already in there basically. Yeah. You you can you you have the, the test cases are automatically versioned. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, uh, 
actual tank. It uh, looks like a great contribution. Um, I have a question. You obviously you touch a lot of uh, people here, so you're getting a lot of these responses from testers and developers. Um, so you have a tool uh, that uh, wants to exist in the in that space. And uh, my question is, um, um, how do you foresee the integration of such a tool in uh, existing developer space tools like VS Code or Eclipse Tea? Or, uh, or as, as part of pipelines in, in GitHub or GitLab? Yeah. Um, or is this going to be a standalone tool that you have that lives outside that? Mm -hmm. Well, as, as we see it, um, yeah, it's, it's definitely, yeah. the, the, the term might be a, a bit mi misleading, especially in the context of Eclipse. Eclipse Developer Console is very similar to Eclipse IDE. It's definitely not a IDE, so it has nothing to do with Visual Studio Code and stuff like that. Um, could it make sense to integrate it there? Maybe, don't know. I really see it more like a CI-CD tool for the automotive world. So that's, that's what we want to bring into the game with this approach and saying, okay, everybody is using CI CD for their application development. Um, and we want to take it to the next step and say, this is how you can do CI CD with your in-car software versions. You're not happy with that answer. <laughs> no, this is probably a discussion for the sort of okay. offline. Yeah, okay. thank you. You're welcome. I Maybe a short, maybe simple question. Uh, what is what is the requirement of the vehicle simulator? What must this component do? What do you do you expect to do it? Do it, is it on a on a um, bus layer so that it simulates the bus signals or replace the bus signals and oh. um, orchestrates whatever oh. is in it, or on on which abstraction layer? Or can you elaborate a little bit on that? Yeah, yeah. Well, that actually depends on the scenario. So if you have a canvas scenario, you would need a canvas simulator to execute it. If you have an MQTT scenario, you need an MQTT simulator, well, very simple MQTT client to be able to execute an MQTT um, scenario. If it's lightweight M2M, you need a lightweight M2M simulator. So it really depends and, and also then the level uh, depends on the simulator, what you actually want to simulate. So based on the kind of a scenario, you need to provide uh, m maybe many of vehicle simulators covering the simulation for the specific scenario. Exactly. Okay, thank you. I, I have just a really quick question. I'm, I'm really amazed that for all the questions that the projects are getting right now, and there's some fabulous questions, that the response isn't, we would welcome that pull request. <laughs> I like to um, give it a little extra flavor. Uh, I, I heard uh, three or four times, you have a product. Uh, I mean, with this contribution, I would I would uh, comment that we now have a pro product yeah, or a component and I see this very positive all these questions because this is definitely what we wanted to achieve is to put a core asset in there as open source and then take it from there to make the best out of it for um, Eclipse STB. Yeah. yeah, so thanks a lot for your contribution. Any any other question? So actually, I kind of do have a question. So are you aware of the ASAM specification for scenarios? So like this open scenario format for use cases, particularly that's used in ADAS? No. OK. Yeah, because it would be interesting to know whether this can be interfaced mm -hmm. quickly with this set of cases. What about uh, um, Open mobility, like sumo, and these yeah. kind of sumo large scale. That is characters. that is the format. Yeah, that is the format. So you can oh, export okay. open scenario. Yeah, you can. Sumo, sumo. Yeah, but you can export the scenarios to run them the test zone in this open uh, open specification. Yeah, that was yeah, that's a question. And I think no, right? Not yet. Yep. So it's Eclipse, Adam, and Eclipse Sumo. Yeah, so let's 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 have this yeah, offline yeah. discussion. I, I will, exactly. so one of the things we will have to do is 
all the cross pollinate with other working groups, right? They have two simulation working groups. One is open mass, that's mainly driven by the OEMs, and the other one is is uh, open mobility, which is mainly taking care of the zoo, which is mainly okay. driven by DLR. Um, so yeah, happy to to discuss this offline afterwards. Yep, sounds good. Yep. Thank Thanks you. a lot.